Hello, welcome. I'm gonna play Thin Ice on the Intellivision. You can see here, this is basically the gameplay on the title screen. You play as Duncan the Penguin, who dunks his penguin friends by ice skating over thin ice and breaking it. This is one of the cooler title screens on the Intellivision. Possibly the best one. You can see here it says Mattel Electronics Presents and it says 1983 for the copyright. But this was not published by Mattel, nor did it release in 1983. It has a rather long development history. I'll leave a link for the Intelligent Liz website in the video description. If you want to read all the details, I'll try to provide an overview as I play, but <laughs> I'm trying to play and remember facts. I won't go so well. <laughs> try to survive as long as I can. So you can play two player alternating if you want. Although the other penguins can't hurt Duncan, it's a seal that really drives you nuts when playing. Because it'll jump on the the lines you're cutting and then follow you and erase the lines. Like it just did. You can sink it. Sometimes it sinks the seal when you finish the uh, lines while he's on it, but sometimes it just confuses him. And these items that you can grab here, these are shrimp cocktails. That's supposed to give him a speed boost, I can hardly tell though. I turn it too soon. So all you need to do is dunk the penguins, but of course you get more points if you clear the whole ice. Up top is the score, number of lives, and number of freezes. The freezes don't work on the seal, unfortunately. They're just for the polar bears that show up on the next level. As I was saying, this game did not release in 1983. It released in 1986 from INTV, a company that acquired the Intellivision and all of its games from Mattel Electronics. So, what happened is... Well, this game is based on a Data East game, Disco Number 1. Because Mattel had rights to uh, port Data East games. But, they didn't like the theme of the game, so they changed it. Keith Robinson came up with the ice concept. Oh, I thought I had that. And, so, the programmer was Julie Hoshizaki. That lobster gets you another freeze. And she completed the game in 1983, but marketing got involved and they wanted to make some changes. <laughs> I guess they wanted to make some animated sequences and change the character to maybe a licensed character. But then, so you know, they start reprogramming things and then someone else gets involved, gets an executive, and he wanted to change the penguin to a fisherman who uses an axe to cut the ice. So, and they go back to start reprogramming the game again. But, I don't know, that guy got pushed out, I guess, so like, we're able to drop the fisherman concept. And then, of course, they couldn't, still couldn't release it because Mattel got the Winter Olympics license for 1984 Winter Olympics. And someone wanted to make it an Olympic game. So the idea was to change the penguin to the Olympic mascot, who was a wolf. Oh boy. 
hit that penguin and erased my whole thing. And so, they were developing an Olympic game for this. However, the game was done as, with the wolf. Although, there were more details where the programmers were pretty upset, so... They were going to hide a version of Duncan in the game, even though it wasn't allowed and they could have lost their jobs. But in any case, Mattel Electronics went out of business in 1984, so the game never got released. Even though it was ready to go into production as the Olympic title. So then it was shelved with basically anything else Mattel Electronics was working on. Until INTV picked it up when they purchased everything. It was one of the games they would release. So, a number of games were either complete or incomplete, and INTV completed them. But not all of them. But they did like this one, so. It got released in 86, and they went with the original version. There's no cinematics in it. This is basically the whole game. And I'd escape that. So that. There were different cartridge sizes, because they had to keep making changes and adding things, which would, uh, uh, just try to hit the whole screen, but then the seal got in the way. So yeah, there, there were... This is the 8K cartridge, the smallest version would have been the cheapest release, so that's probably why INTV chose it. But it went rather large. I want to say maybe up to 16k one of the versions was. I guess you can't complete the ice unless there's actually something in it. Like these penguins. Ah, oh, just trying to zig and zag, but I'm doing too well with the disc. The controller could be a little tricky. The yeah, longer the level goes on, the faster the seal gets, too, which is a pain. <laughs> the seal, huh? And the little igloos up in the, the corner there, where I'm going under right now, those represent the level. So that's level four. The lobster gets an extra freeze. I have a lot of freezes. It's unfortunate they don't work on the seal, only the polar bear. Ah, oh, that other penguin. I gotta somehow. Oh, this is gonna be a pain because, yeah, this is this is not gonna go well because the only way to get that last penguin is to get the whole screen because he's. I've already cleared the ice and I can't clear through the water. I have to do the whole screen just to get. Yeah, that's a problem. It's possible to get the whole screen, it's just really difficult. Yeah, this is not gonna be good. I'm gonna freeze the polar bears, but then the seal's gonna ruin it anyway. It'll be amazing if I actually do this. Otherwise, I'll be stuck at this level forever. There's just nothing you can do. It's, it's a mistake of mine to uh, clear the screen without getting all the all the penguins. I don't think the seal will. I think he'll ruin it every time. I don't. <laughs> this level's going on too long. Oh, I, and almost.
Yeah, this is a real problem. Oh, look at this. Oh my god, he got it. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna do it. Holy cow. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Cause, yeah, I didn't even think of that. If you clear the screen in parts, but don't get the penguins. Ugh. Alright, so I can also tell you about the music. This music is made by George Sanger. He's known as the fat man in the industry. But I'm stuck. You can't backtrack over your trail. It's George Sanger. He still works with audio. Fatman.com is his website. This was his first video game that he provided music for. Ah, yeah, <laughs> you getting myself trapped. Uh, not doing well at all. So the history with I think with George Sanger is a friend of his. He was gonna do this for free. Someone at Mattel knew him, you know, just to get his name out there. Mattel doesn't hire freelancers, so. He was told not to hire the guy. The Mattel guy was that, you know, told not to hire George because they couldn't use it. Any music he made. But he went ahead and had him make the music anyway. And once the people at Mattel heard it, geez, I keep doing the same thing. They, uh, they wanted it, so they ultimately ultimately paid twelve hundred dollars for it. Yeah, that was pointless. Believe it or not, my high score is over two hundred thousand. But it doesn't really matter, I mean this is all you see the whole game, it just keeps repeating it. Faster speeds is just more difficulty. Ah oh, and then I lost. So, that is the nice, that's the whole game, I mean, like I said, it's not going to change at all, the farther you get, it just gets harder. So, thanks for watching.